Welcome to the lesson 7 of Open Saba. In previous lessons, we were seeing how to work with JPA mapped superclasses and how we can reuse code in our application. You can see more about this lesson in this link. In this lesson, we will be talking about entity inheritance. We know an entity might inherit from another entity. This entity inheritance is a useful tool to simplify our model. We are going to use it to add a new order entity to our invoicing application. We want to add a new concept to the invoicing application. Order. While an invoice is something you want to charge to your customer, an order is something the customer has ordered from us. These two concepts are strongly related because you will charge the thing your customer have ordered from you and you actually have served him. It would be nice to manage orders in your application and to associate this order with its corresponding invoice, as shown in the next UML diagram. Here you can see the Java code. So, an invoice has several orders and an order can reference an invoice. Note that we don't use light fetching for the invoice reference, this is because of a hibernate bug when the reference owns the bidirectional relationship. What shape does order have? Well, it has a customer, several detailed lines like product and quantity, a year and a number, something like this. Incidentally, this UML diagram is identical to the invoice diagram, so that's it. To create your order entity, you can just copy and paste the invoice class and the work is done. But wait a moment. Remember that copy and paste is a mortal sin, so we have to find a way to reuse invoice code for order. A practical way to reuse code for invoice and order is by using inheritance. Moreover, it's an excellent opportunity to learn how easy it is to use inheritance with JPA and OpenSAO. In most object-oriented cultures, you have to observe the it's a rule. It means that we cannot do invoice extends order because an invoice is not an order. The solution for this case is creating a base class for both order and invoice, and we are going to call this class commercial document. Here you have the UML diagram for commercial document. We start to refactor our code. So, go to a model package, locate invoice, right click on it, go to refactor and click on rename. Here you need to change invoice for commercial document. Click on finish, open it. And you need to add here the abstract modifier. You can save and we want to create instance of invoice and order, but we don't want to create instance of commercial document directly, so we declare it as abstract. Now we need to create our new invoice class. So Go to your package model, right click new class. Here we write invoice name, click on finish, add here entity getter and setter annotations. And now here you will add extends and the name or your base class that it's commercial document and we save here and we have here the code uh, created. Note that invoice has a very succinct code, indeed the body of the class is by now empty. This new code requires a slight different database schema, now invoices and orders will be stored in the same table using a discriminator column. There before you need to remove the old table executing the next SQL statements. To execute this SQL statement, first make sure your application is running, so start it. 
Next, go and click on Open Sava and click on Database Manager. Here, you will write the SQL statement. And we click here on Execute SQL. And OK, we have finished here. Now, to go to your ID again, you need to close the database manager. Now you have control again of your ID. Thanks to commercial document based class, creating the order entity is that easy. Let's see. First, we need to create here a new class, name it order, click on finish and add the entity and getter and setter annotations. And here, I'll extends and the name of your base class that is commercial document click on save and we have here order entity we need to test now our invoice and order entities so restart your application And as we can see here, we have invoice and have orders and all the same. They are equals, so they are OK by now. After writing the above order class, although is empty by now, you can use the order mode from your browser. And yes, creating a new entity with a structure like invoice that is a commercial document entity is very easy and quickly. You can see how we can use inherence as an elegant way to have simple code. Order module works perfectly, but it has a little problem. The new order number is calculated from the last invoice number, not from the last order number. This is because the calculator for the next number is read from the invoice entity. An obvious solution is to move the number property definition from commercial document to invoice and order. Although, we are not going to do this in this way because in the next lesson we will refine the way to calculate the next number. For now we simply do a little adjustment in the current code. So, go to your calculators package, open next number for your calculator, and here locate this line where is invoice. You need to replace invoice for your base class that is commercial document. We save here and that's it. Now we search for the maximum number of any commercial document of the year in order to calculate the new number. Therefore, the numbering is shared across all commercial documents. We will improve in the next lesson for having separate numbering for invoice and orders and you have a better support for a multi-user environment. Now that you don't need to change the name of any property of invoice to do the refactoring. This is because we follow the next pragmatic principle. Do not use the class name in member name. For example, inside an account class, do not use the account word in any method or property, just you can see here. Using this nomenclature, you can refactor account inheritance inherit with renaming its members, and you can write polymorphic code with account. 
By now, order and invoice are exactly the same. We are going to do the first extensions on them, that is to associate order with invoice, as shown in the next diagram. Now we need to go to relations. So go to order and make here a reference to invoice with a manage one relation. Click on save. Now go to invoice and here make a collection from order. with a one to money relation mapped by invoice we save and that's it it's time to test these new relations so restart your application And we can see here invoice orders. In invoice we have here order and in order we have here invoice. Now we can create from invoice a new invoice and we can call it call here a customer. We can create here a new order uh, for customer. We can add here the product that we want. And if we click save here, we can see here that invoice was created and order was created and associated with invoice. So this is working. Now we can go directly to orders. You can see here one order. We can create a new order, and when we create this order, we can add here our customer or products, and we have here to create a new invoice from this order. So click here, new invoice for a new customer, click on create, click on save, and OK. We created an order and an invoice and if we go here to invoice list we can see here the two orders the two invoice and the two orders we have our application working fine but our interface is a little ugly but don't worry in the next lesson we will improve it this lesson has shown you some practical examples about how to use the inheritance of Java with JPA entities to simplify your code. We use the default JPA configuration for inheritance through your gun refined JPA behavior for inheritance using some JPA annotations like inheritance, discriminator column, discriminator value, and so on. So how was the lesson? Leave us a comment. And if you have a problem with this lesson, leave a comment and we will help you to solve it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to receive new content. Until next time!